creating a new software category from the inventor himself. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Bram Cohen, founder and CEO of Chia Network and creator of BitTorrent. Welcome, Bram. Good to be here. So BitTorrent ranks with Lotus123, Netscape, and, and WordStar as computer programs that really defined a category. So take us back to the time before you developed BitTorrent. How did you get involved in the programming and what led you to create the BitTorrent protocol? Oh, uh, well, I was a programming prodigy when I was a kid. I, you know, I, I did a little bit of coding when I was like six years old and I like <clears throat> wrote a program to play connect for that did alpha beta pruning and stuff when I was 12. I came up with something called WalkSat that's important in the previous generation of AI when I was in high school. Um, so uh, when I was in my 20s, I, moved, I dropped out of college and I moved to San Francisco and uh, uh, and got jobs working in a, a bunch of startups that you've never heard of. Although I did, I did when I got here, I, I, I'd ask people like, hey, I wanna go somewhere where I can get work as a programmer and get around without a car. And everyone's like, uh, oh, you should move to San Francisco. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. So, uh, and I asked people, okay, so how do I find a job and a place to live? And someone told me, oh, go to cnewmark.com. There's a mailing list. So I, I went to that website and there was like just a regular mail man mailing list and I subscribed to it and I read every single message posted to it. And then after a while, the traffic got a bit high to read every single message. Uh, so I, 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 I stopped, but uh, uh, it was run by this guy named Craig. I hear it's grown a bit since then, but yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I had some experience working at companies that did networking stuff. And the last company I worked at uh, is sort of in some sense newly relevant now. It was called Mojo Nation. It was the all singing, all dancing uh, cypherpunk project. It's, it's what people today would call a cryptocurrency. And uh, 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 that was more than a little bit ahead of its time. And, <laughs> uh, but out of the stuff I'd worked at on that one, I thought the swarming distribution stuff was the stuff I'd worked on that really was interesting where I'd gotten somewhere. I, it all needed to be rewritten from scratch because it was all wrong, but I thought that was the problem where uh, something really value could, valuable could be done because you have all these computers on the internet, they have all this upload capacity and they're just not using it. They're just sitting there, not uploading. And it's not like you can store upload capacity on a shelf. If you don't use it, it's gone forever. So, uh, so why not try and utilize that as much as possible? Uh, and so I decided to create an open source tool that just did that one thing, and that was BitTorrent. What was it about BitTorrent that challenged many of the home routers at the time? Um, the, it, there, there are a bunch of funny stories. Uh, for the most part, it was fine. Uh, I, I always insist I am very, very big on only sending completely normal, well-defined uh, within the spec data. I insist I really go out of my way to do everything weird. Friends of mine are like, Bram, in, the, in this extreme form of trying to ever avoid doing anything weird, you wind up doing things that are really, really weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, there were at the time a bunch of just bad home routers. Actually, to this day, most home routing equipment is really, really terrible. It's actually kind of terrifying how large of a botnet can be made almost instantly if people just go around routing um, uh, uh, the routers that people's ISPs give to them. Um, but a bunch of them just weren't set up to handle lots of traffic going both ways and would just kind of crash. <laughs> and it's like, well, <laughs> not my fault. <laughs> As a person has a net connection, it's supposed to work this way. If the hardware can't handle it, it's not working within its spec. It's like, <laughs> Why did you, what, what was behind the decision to use Python as your language for writing BitTorrent? Oh, oh, you know, I like getting my work done. <laughs> so at the time, writing stuff in Python was considered very out there. Um, 
And I had this, what was at the time, this completely funky setup where I would write my stuff in Python and then use Py to exe to change it to a Windows executable and then use Nullsoft installer uh, to make an actual installer out of it. And pe people acted like I was doing something nuts uh, from doing this. And it's like, no, I'm just trying <laughs> as one human being who actually kind of hates computers and does not like spending his time messing with them. I, I just want to get my work done in a way that's straightforward where I don't have to mess with this stuff. I mean, it still would from time to time have to like, uh, null soft installer would get upgraded and I'd have to like just reinstall the Windows machine <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it get, make sure I didn't have like my code was running against the latest version. It was so annoying. Anyway, um, uh, but uh, Python is not, it, it, people who are into Python aren't actually into Python. They're actually not into programming languages. They just want to get their work done. And, and Python is just the language that just gets you, lets you get your work done without thinking about it and without really thinking about the language much at all. And uh, when you're doing like network protocols where the bottleneck is not CPU, it's bandwidth because you're sending all of your data through this straw that's connected to the internet. <laughs> that is your, uh, your literal bottleneck on this whole thing. Um, so you don't need it to run fast from a CPU standpoint. So Python was a completely reasonable thing to do, although at the time it was considered extremely unorthodox. What was the nature of the copyright landscape at the time and how did this impact or affect uh, BitTorrent users? Oh man, everyone thinks I must have some serious thoughts about copyright. It's like, I don't know, I, I, my job is to move bits from point A to point B and everyone's always getting in my way and blaming me for things and complaining about things. I just want to get... <laughs> um, so I try and stay out of the fray. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wish the world were designed to help technology move forward more. <laughs> what were what were some of the most useful and productive use cases for early versions of BitTorrent? Uh, you know, I think the, f uh, well, there was one thing where there was a whole hoopla around a release of Red Hat 9, I believe it was, that people had actually paid money to get the good bandwidth for immediately. And of course their servers just fell over and I made it available using BitTorrent and everyone just downloaded using BitTorrent. So everyone's like, wow, this actually works. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was used, uh, kind of the community I was first targeting, not not because they're big, but just because they were a warm, fuzzy community I could actually look at was the taper community who are making pretty large files available. So they used it a fair amount. I think the first place it really took off was in the anime community. There was this very strange thing happening at the time where anime was not typically made available globally. This is a really long time ago. Now everything is just you know available everywhere in no small part because everyone's going to pirate it anyway. But the, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and what I always say is if people are pirating your stuff, you probably are not making a very good legal experience for getting it. <laughs> it's probably your own damn fault. Um, but um, things that were not available in English, actually fans would dub them and make them available and then usually take them down once they became uh, available from the actual source of it. So BitTorrent really took off in that community. Uh, as well. A lot of people may not realize this about you, but you're quite the math geek. Talk about what role mathematics plays in your recreational until time. Oh, uh, I, I actually am a published uh, mechanical puzzle author. Uh, they, they, I, I invent these mechanical puzzles of a few different types, uh, some like uh, Rubik's Cube, some take apart things. Um, there's one uh, called Fidgets, F-I-D-G-I-T-Z. Uh, that I'm quite proud of that you can get in like toy stores and bookstores and on Amazon and stuff. But that one costs 10 bucks. It's in mass production. Uh, yeah, I, I, I spend quite a bit of time uh, working on in inventing these crazy, insane things. And also an aspiring foodie and uh, much more. Bram Cohen, creator of BitTorrent, founder and CEO of Chia Network. If somebody wants to connect with you, maybe they want to find out more about your puzzles or just uh, you in general. What's the best way to connect? Uh, 
if people want to see my current project, they can go to chia.net. That's our homepage. And on Twitter, I'm Bram Cohen. That's the easiest way to reach me. There you go. And if you guys want to find more of my interviews, you can do that right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching. Thank you.